Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani, Microsoft Business Applications MVP. In this video, we are going to look at a COVID-19 tracker solution that was built by leveraging the Power Platform. The first thing we are going to look at is the Power App, which is the front end piece of this solution. We are looking at the home page of this app currently. On the home screen of this app, we are looking at all the current cases of COVID-19 worldwide. We have an interactive map component, which is a new component that is available as part of private preview. And in this interactive map component, I am plotting all the points, which are pins of the data that has been captured for the COVID-19 tracking application. This data is coming from the John Hopkins University provided web service. Because this is an interactive map, I can zoom in and zoom out. Additionally, what I can do for this map is I can change the pitch of this map. I can zoom in and zoom out using the features provided right here. Plus, I can also go ahead and change the direction in which I am looking into the map. So you can change the direction, you can change the zoom, or you can go ahead and change the pitch of the map. There is also another feature in the map wherein you can change the view to be to enable satellite view. So you can turn it on or you can turn that off. All this data is coming from my data source, which in this case is SharePoint. If I reset my map, it's going to go ahead and just reset, reset it to show me all the confirmed cases across the globe. I can even drill down to a specific country. So as you can see, it's now only showing me the cases or the confirmed COVID-19 cases for the United States. And as I start zooming in, currently the map has clustering enabled. As I zoom in, it starts breaking the clusters and starts showing me more specific points. This is a feature that can be turned on or off in the dynamic map. I can also further drill down to a region or a province level. So if I only want to look at cases in New York, it's going to go ahead and pinpoint directly into New York and show me the number of confirmed cases in New York. If I reset my filter, this is again going to show me all the cases worldwide. The map also has the ability to display the pins with different colors. So in this case, I'm showing you the confirmed cases. I can change this to active. I can change this to deaths, or I can change this to the number of people who have recovered. So as you can see, I'm using different color combinations to highlight different types of cases. And I can do this based on a case that I pick. I can do this based on a country level. And I can also do this at a region level if the regional data is provided by the web service. So for example, if I pick China, I can look at the number of people who have recovered in China right here. And I can do the same, of course, for any other country. At the same time, when I'm looking at something, so for example, if I filter this down to US and let's say uh, I have, I want to look at Michigan. So I'm going to pick Michigan. This is the current scenario in Michigan that the dynamic map is highlighting for me. I can also go ahead and send a notification email. And what this is going to do is this is going to redirect me to another screen in the app and it will have all the data that I captured on the home screen right here for me. So I filtered down to my country was US, the region was Michigan, and it has all the data right here. And I can go ahead and quickly send an email out to any user in my organization or any external user cases in Michigan. So I can go ahead and highlight this and just send my email out. And that's it. it the Power App sends the email. On the home screen, as apart from the interactive map, I also have a component right here that's showing me the total cases. Plus, I have a gallery that I've highlighted right here on the right-hand side that shows me all the regions and all the countries with the case type highlighted. So currently I have confirmed cases, so it's showing me a list of all the confirmed cases from in descending order. I can do the same thing for deaths as well, and I can see the countries that have been listed here. The data in this case is broken down by country and region. 
I can also go to another screen that I have built as part of this app through the left navigation component. And this one is the around me screen. So what you can do here is you can track cases around your current location. Power apps can track your current location. It has capabilities to track location if you, if you enable these capabilities within the app. In this scenario, it's tracking the cases, the confirmed cases around my location in a 300 mile radius or geofence that I have defined. I can increase this geofence or I can decrease this geofence right here. And as I do this, it will show me all the other cases around me in this geofence that I have defined. So in this case, I'm looking at confirmed cases around my current location. I am currently in San Diego, California. So based around my location, showing me all the details. What I can also do is go ahead and define my own address. And this is also a new component which is available in private preview today. You can sign up for both the dynamic or interactive map and this new address input component. I will put the link for the private uh, preview where you can go ahead and sign up for it in the description of this video. The map component as well as the address input component will be going into public preview later this summer. So in this scenario, in the address input component, what I can do is I can go ahead and start typing in an address. And notice as I type in the address, IntelliSense is going ahead and picking up all the valid addresses for me. So I can go ahead and pick an address. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the International Airport Houston address. And the moment I pick this, it goes and maps it right here on the map and highlights it as the location. So with the address input component, what you get is IntelliSense, so it can search for addresses. You can even geofence these addresses. So you can say only give me the addresses within a 200 or a 500 mile radius of this address that I want to specify. So you can either keep it open, in my case currently it is open, or you can geofence it. And once you put in an address, it will go ahead and give you all the details of the address in JSON format, as well as individual properties that is enabled or exposed as part of this address component. So for example, in this case, I have put the International Airport Houston address. It will give me the country, the state, the city, the zip code, uh, and all the other relevant information, latitude, longitude, etc., for this particular address directly from this component. Now in this case, my interactive map is also talking to this address component because not only is it plotting this on the map, but it is also going ahead and plotting all the cases around a geofence that I have defined, okay? So in this case, I can look at all the cases in a so-and-so mile radius around me. And I can do the same things again. I can go and send an email for this, which says in a 500 mile radius of the address that I have defined, here is the current scenario and I can go and send this email out. So in my case, I'm actually frequently doing this for my family. I put the address associated with my family and I get the latest details and I send them emails and let them know what's going on. As far as the map component, so I covered the address component in a little bit more detail. If we look at the map component, uh, the map component itself has a property called, so if I go to the properties of the map component, data source, and in this case, I'm giving a collection as a data source to this map component. And this collection, if we look at this, has three basic properties to it. The label that you wanna showcase on the map, the latitude, and the longitude. So if I provide these three elements, it will go ahead and plot them on the map. You can also just, instead of specifying the latitude and longitude, you can also send in actual addresses. So you don't have to know the latitude and longitude. And if those addresses are valid addresses, they will automatically be plotted on the map for you. This is what the interactive map component provides. So these were the first two screens we looked at, the COVID-19 tracking screen and the cases around me screen. I also have something called as a chatbot that I have embedded directly within the Power App. This uses a custom, custom iframe component, a PCF component that was put out by one of the MVPs, Yash. So I'm actually leveraging his component and I am utilizing a Power Virtual Agent that I set up a bot for in Power Virtual Agents within minutes. So in this case, for my bot, you can go ahead and start interacting with my chatbot. 
So I'm going to say hi, and the bot responds to my, inter the bot responds to the conversation that I'm having with it. Now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and ask the bot what is coronavirus, and if the bot has a matching topic or a matching trigger phrase associated with the question or the interaction that I'm having with the bot, if it finds a match, it is going to go ahead and execute the steps that I have defined in my virtual agent. So in this case, because I have a matching trigger for what is coronavirus, and this uses natural language processing, so it doesn't exactly have to be those words, it will go ahead and execute the topic that I have incorporated for this. And I can ask additional questions as well. So for example, should I be wearing a mask? It'll go ahead and get me the data if it finds a matching topic for it. I can also interact with the bot further. It, it is asking me whether it answered my question, yes or no. I can say yes. And then the bot can also go ahead and send you surveys, wherein I can rate my experience of interaction with the bot. Uh, do I need any other help? No thanks. And the bot is going to close out and say thank you. So I can go ahead and keep interacting with this bot. So you have a chat bot right here in this application. I have a uh, the tracking data that I am leveraging from a web service thanks to John Hopkins University. And I also have a video screen wherein I am showcasing uh, videos that, are, that uh, I leverage from the World Health Organization. So that's the basic crux of what this app does. From a more deep dive standpoint, uh, most of y'all would have seen the data coming from the John Hopkins University that they plot on a map. This data comes from a web service that they provide. And when you make a call out to this web service, I'm actually doing this right on the browser. It's a free web service that you can call. You can see this web service provides me the country information. It provides me the latitude, the longitude, the, num the confirmed cases, recovered deaths, active cases, as well as the, the province or the state. So it gives me all the details that I require. Now for my Power App, in my scenario, what I did is I went ahead and created a SharePoint list to maintain the tracking data. And in the SharePoint list, I have defined my columns, which is basically the metadata that I want to track. And that's what I've built out in my SharePoint list. I have a flow that I created, and this flow runs in intervals of uh, one hour. So every hour this flow runs. And what this flow does is it actually makes the call out to the same web service that I just pointed out from the John Hopkins University. And it fetches the data, loops through all the nodes that is returned as part of this data set, and goes ahead and creates items in my tracking list. And my Power App directly talks to that same list. So all this data is almost equivalent to live data that I'm fetching from the John Hopkins University and pushing this to my data source, which in this case is SharePoint. As far as my Power Virtual Agent is concerned, in this scenario, I leveraged the Q&A page, web page that the World Health Organization has put out. And this already has all Q&A that WHO has defined. So all I had to do was copy this URL, go to Power Virtual Agents, go to Topics, and go to Suggest Topics and just enter the web page, click on add and click on start. What this will do is it will actually go and scan that web page for you and get all the topics relevant to each Q&A that has been defined in on this web page. So all the questions that you see right here are topics that got pre-created for me once I included them by using this method that I just showcased. So I did not have to go and build, build all my topics. I literally leveraged the Q&A that is already available on a web page. Now, if you want to extend this further, add your own topics, add your own scenarios, you can easily go ahead and do that in Power Virtual Agents. And the beauty of Power Virtual Agents is once you build your bot, you can test your bot right here. And then when you go to channels, you can see the amount of channels that are available for you to deploy your bot to. So I can deploy this on a website, I can deploy this to Teams or any other channel that is available for me. In this scenario, I have gone ahead and leveraged a custom component, which is an iframe component. And all I did is just pointed that iframe to the bot that I deployed and added branding to match the branding of my solution. So this is about the Power Platform based 
COVID-19 tracking solution that I set up. As you can see, it leverages Power Apps, it leverages Power Automate, and it leverages Power Virtual Agents. The data set in this case is SharePoint. It could have been any data source. It could have even been the common data service. And I can also go ahead and on top of all of this, I can go and build Power BI reports as well. As part of the emergency response uh, response uh, gallery that Microsoft has put out in the community forum. So if you've, if you've seen the emergency response gallery uh, in the community forum, uh, there are a lot of apps that community users as well as Microsoft has put out in this forum uh, that you can go ahead and uh, leverage. Uh, my app, the, the COVID-19 tracking app, the one that I just demoed uses a lot of features that are in private preview. So if you want to try these features out, you can sign up the description, the link to the private previews in the description. I have already put out another version of this that uses static Bing map components. So it's a, it's not using the interactive map, map of course, because it's in private preview, but it's more or less the same solution that I showcased earlier. And, and this solution does not have the chatbot. The reason being you cannot currently uh, package or, 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 or share power virtual agents that you've built. Once that is made available, I will be sharing my COVID-19 board as well. So heading back uh, to the community gallery. So out here, there are a lot of uh, good uh, use cases around COVID-19 that uh, community users as well as Microsoft has put out. Two very, uh, very useful components that I would like to highlight is number one, the crisis communication template, which is again built on top of Power Platform. It leverages uh, Power Automate, Power Apps, Teams, and so on and so forth. And there is also a new app, uh, a new a solution called the emergency response application that was put out in the community forum. So please go ahead and check these out. You can, you can mix and match. You don't have to adhere to just what one solution provides. So you could actually go ahead and mix the COVID-19 tracking solution with the crisis communication app and you can have the best of both worlds. So go ahead, try things out with the Power Platform and uh, thank you so much for watching this uh, video. Do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.